How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. This is really cool. It's one single solar cell. I want to thank Kalfa Solar for supplying me with these solar panels and also the raw cell that we can look at today. If you're in the market for solar panels, 23% is one of the best in the industry. Check out their products down in the video description below. I flap it around and you can tell this is a monocrystalline because it has this beautiful blue hue to it. This is made from the same material they make IC chips like your CPU, GPU. They grow it like a crystal. You get this really giant one and they slice them up and it turns into these thin pieces that you can use. Rough numbers here, this is a 200 watt panel and it can output up to 12 amps. It's a half cell. What does that mean? There are 15 half cells that goes all the way down and four of these across. So for a total of 60 half cell panels. It's a full cell looks like this and they actually have to cut this in half and put each of these halves right here. So when you have one cell like this and all these little dots on the top are connected to one conductor. On the back is the same thing. All of these lines are connected. So when the light hits it, you get about half a volt and up to about six amps from this little thing right here. Of course, it's only half a volt, so it's not that much power. In other words, it's around three watts. And we got 60 of these across the whole panel. So three times 60, 180, around 200 watts. There's a difference between the raw cell and each of these solar cells. You can see this silvery line right here. They add this in order to reduce the resistance going across the cell. And if you count them, there's 10 little wires that runs across, and this is called a multi-bus bar cell. The reason they wanna do this is to reduce the resistance across each cell. Imagine if you just have one of these bus bars and current needs to flow from one side all the way to the bus bar in the center. There's gonna be some resistance from this point to this point, and so there's gonna be some wasted energy going from here to here. So having multi-bus bars is part of the feature that gets you to 23% efficiency. Now this bus bar is connected from up here all the way to here. There's a point where it disappears. All these little points connect to the back of the next cell. Do you have two cells connected together now? 0.5 volts plus another 0.5 volt. Now you got one volt here, but still the same six amps under full sun. From the first one to the second one looks the same. Second one to the third one looks the same all the way down to the 15th at the bottom. At the end, it connects to something behind this black bar. The second column here looks the same as the first column. You got two 15 strings going to this line here, gets connected to these two 15 strings of half solar cells. It's going in here, and this connection point is connecting to the back of the second cell. Same thing with the fourth column. The reason they wanna cut them in half is because if you cover one of the strings up, the other string will still work. If you cover this column, you'll still have 100 watts, or this one, or this one. So it makes it more resilient for partial shading. If I move the light around, you can see two conductors coming from this box all the way up to the top bar over here. 30 half cells of around half a volt each means is 15 volts. You got a second string, 15 plus another 15. That's another 15 volts, but six amp each. So a total of 12 amps, roughly 12 times 15. That's around 180 Watts. But in reality, the voltages of these things are likely going to be a little bit higher. Therefore in full sun, you're going to get your 200 Watts. When you get the panel, there's actually a little bit of plastic wrap you need to remove. So I have this prior. And now we can remove this plastic sticky thing. The corners of these things are actually a little sharp. They're made out of aluminum. So you can put these corners on and this will protect you when you're working on them so you won't get cut. And we can then remove all the plastic coverings on this thing. Now I have a wire connected to the back, 0.403. I'm gonna shine more light on it. Now we got 0.536 directly underneath my lamp. I'm getting about 0.588 volts. I'm actually only using the bottom half of this cell. Even if you break a little piece off, it will still generate solar electricity, 0.45 volts. These are basically very thin silicon crystals. I can break them fairly easily. I'm gonna bend them right here. Just like that. Oh, it just kind of fractured right there. If there's something hard that knocks on it, it will break them.
I've set up this area to shine a whole bunch of light on it. But obviously these lights is nowhere as powerful as the sunlight. All of this is around 300 watts of LED lights right now. And right at the center is eight kilolux four kilolux on the edges. Full sun is actually 100 kilolux. It's a potentiometer. It varies from 100 ohm to around one ohm. Connected, it's 17.4 volts. This is the open circuit voltage. If we close it, right away we get 184 milliamps and it drops down to 16.2 volts. So if we keep on varying it like this, I turn it down in resistance a little bit, it goes up in current and it goes down in voltage. Now the power is actually this times this. So if I keep on turning it a little bit, the current goes up, but the voltage goes down a little bit and so on and so forth until I turn it all the way up to like about one ohm. This is 290 milliamps times half a volt. The purpose of this is to show that it's not quite intuitive to figure out the maximum power. You have the voltage in blue that drops from 17 volts all the way to half a volt. You have the current that increases from zero steadily to around 250 milliamps. And the effective load, which is that little potentiometer that I've been adjusting, goes from around 100 ohms all the way down to zero ohms. So when you multiply the voltage and the current, you get watts. And at some point in the middle, it peaks around three and a half watts. This is exactly what an MPPT controller does, which is a maximum power point transfer controller. It tries to make the load just right so that you get the maximum power output. For safety reasons, this kind of glass fractures into tiny little pieces. This is the third column of half cells. The fourth and fifth bus bar are exposed and it's connecting to this metal strip over here. The glass is on top and right underneath there's this sticky glue layer. Underneath that there's a black piece of plastic that I cut away. And then behind that there's a backing material. This older solar panel that I own, it's 100 watts. Let's take a look at the difference between the two. First, this is a full cell solar panel, which is not as good for protection against partial shading. The circuit starts over here, it runs down, and it comes back up over here, connects via this bus bar, goes down, comes back up, connects via this bus bar. So the entire panel is in a string of all these full cells. Any partial coverage of this thing will result in zero watt output. Not only that, each cell only has two bus lines soldered in. Compared to the Kalfa Solar, look at there's 10 bus lines over here. Space about 5 eighths of an inch apart. This one is space two and three eighths inch apart. And so it's not as efficient. We can't really see it by the naked eye, but these newer cells, they have a stack up in such a way that any sunlight that goes in and accidentally passes through will get reflected back. So you get another chance at loosening up those electrons so that it can provide current for you. These solar cells actually does the reflection internally. So they're actually opaque. You can't really see through them. I can shine a very bright flashlight through the back and no light gets leaked through. Here's another comparison of a different solar panel. This one uses half solar cells, except it's not resistant to partial shading. It starts with the wiring here, goes all the way down. It loops back over here, comes back up. This bar connects these two strings and then goes back down. So it actually runs a wire from down there all the way up to this connection box. This solar panel is one long string of 33 half cells. Any partial shading of this panel is going to wipe out all the energy. If we take a look at one of the half cells, at least it has five multi bus bars. There is a disadvantage with having really fat wide bus bars because this blocks light from going into your solar cells. There are 12 pre-drilled mounting holes, two grounding screw holes, and these little rectangular holes on the corners or drainage holes. There is the pooling on my older solar panels. Pour a little bit of water on here. And if we tilt it to a typical level, maybe 30 degrees. You can see it drains away. I can see a little bit of gap on the other corner. There. It just drains away really fast. This is just to see if I can actually get 200 watts out of this. 20 minutes past noon and I'm getting 180 watts. It's reading about 95 kilolux. 100 kilolux is about full sun. But it does get a little stronger than that at around 120, 125 kilolux in like very, very strong summer sun. Seems reasonable that it can obtain the full 200 watts. Now the sun actually has a spectrum of frequencies, including a lot of infrared. And actually solar panels can absorb infrared light very, very well. And the sun gives off quite a bit of that. This meter really only tells me roughly how much sunlight is out. 
if it's full sun or not. And so at least for me, it's not too far a stretch to say that this can output 200 watts in full summer sun. Let's take a quick look at the specs on these things. It's a 200 watt rigid solar panel. The typical operational voltage is 17.1 and the open circuit voltage 20.1 volts. Now, when you wanna connect these things, this is open circuit voltage. So you got 20 volts right here if you try to set this thing up right in the sun. If you wanna be careful, you want to you know, shroud this so that you don't accidentally touch them. If you connect two of them in series, all of a sudden you got around 40 volts from end to end. And the more of them that you connect, the more dangerous it becomes. It might become over a hundred volts. So a lot of precaution needs to be taken as you're daisy chaining these up more and more. Now there's an issue with compatibility with hybrid inverters. The first most obvious thing is to look at the wattage. This one in particular accepts up to 1600 watts, meaning, oh, I can have eight of these. Even at full sun, it should be able to handle it. The next one is maximum open voltage. Because this guy, the maximum open voltage is 20.1, not 20 now. That means at most I can have four of these in series, not five because then it will be 100.5 volts. It will be over the spec on this thing. So solar input is connected to transistors that have a certain breakdown voltage. This is a hard limit and if you go over it, it will shoot through the transistor, fry it up, it starts smoking. There are what they call process variations within the chip manufacturing that might make it so that one particular unit is more tolerant than another, but you really don't wanna rely on this. Rely on the specs instead and follow it to the dot. The next thing you really, really wanna pay attention to is the MPPT input voltage range. This is the range at which the MPPT action of the hybrid inverter would work. Therefore, being 30 to 85 volt DC, this guy's operational voltage is around 17.1. So if you have two of them at least, it's at least 34.2 volts. Therefore, you need to have at least two, but less than four in series. So if you were to have eight of these at the maximum 1600 watts, so I would have four of these in series and put two of those in parallel and then you have eight of them. The short circuit current is 12.3 amps. If you got two of them in parallel, it means it's 24.6 amps. This is less than the 40 amps, so it should be good. Alternatively, you might be tempted to do two in series and then four of these in parallel. In this case, this won't work because the 12.3 amps times four is 49.2 amps. This is over the 40 amps maximum input of this hybrid inverter. Sometimes if you buy a hybrid inverter, it might require you to have more than 150 volts minimum for the MPPT range. If you were using these guys, that would mean you need at least nine of them in series to connect to that hybrid inverter. Sometimes with these small setups, you might not have that many panels. So keep that in mind when you buy a hybrid inverter to go with your solar panels. I've got three of the panels mounted on a solar panel mounting kit. This allows me to not mount it on the roof, which is a lot more hassle than it has to be. You have room in your yard. You have a really big yard that's really sunny. This is a perfect way to do it. Actually, if you buy this particular kit that I have, you have to add two extra metal bars at the bottom to make it stable and able to stand on its own. Also, you have to put some heavy stuff on it so the wind doesn't blow it away. All that equipment that's not the main topic of this video, I'll still list it in the video description below. Check out these 200 watt Calpha solar panels. They're certainly better than any of the ones that I've ever tested before. If you guys are interested, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time. <music>